Their selection here in game one of Swiss round eight as we get ready to show the leads here again, Stefan Mott versus uh, Tim Edwards. Tim changing it up, leading with Raging Bolt and Incineroar, while Stefan will stick around with Ogre Pond and Incineroar. Yeah, and so now Incineroar on the field for Stefan. No Tornadus up against this Raging Bolt, but Raging Bolt does find itself up against the Ogre Pond um, and immediately on the field. Uh, looking a little bit more com comfortable to start trying to boost up, not really threatened too much by either of these Pokemon. Of course, doesn't really want to take a knockoff uh, and lose its leftovers, doesn't really want to get parting shot and have that first boost undone, and Fake Out could just disrupt it this turn, but nothing is immediately putting damage pressure on it. It's going to be comfortable to sit on the field and start doing its work, but just because it's comfortable doesn't mean there aren't plays available for Tim to try to get out of that position, because Raging Bull will always be able to find some future comfortable position. Yeah, and the nice thing about Leftovers Raging Bolt is just how much damage it can heal back up after taking some damage. So you don't want to lose that Leftovers just yet. Stefan's Ogre Pond will Terrastalize, will get the Embody Aspect and boost its special defense, which will be able to deal with Raging Bolt's attacks a little better as Incineroar on Stefan's side will go for a Fake Out into the Incineroar on Tim's side. Incineroar not being able to retaliate, and here's an Ogre Pond Sword Stand, so trying to boost up its attack stat by two stages, um, trying to deal some damage out onto this Raging Bolt that is going to be more specially defensive because of that Calm Mind. Yeah, so both sides just get their first boost off. Um, fake out into Incineroar. The Incineroars just kind of look at each other for the turn and let one Calm Mind go up on the Raging Bolt and one Sword Stance on the Ogre Pond. Ogre Pond kind of commits Trastalization very aggressively there, so that must be a clear part of Stefan's plan, but there wasn't that much need for it on that turn. Unlikely to really need the special defense boost. Um, you, we, we know what this Raging Bolt is out here to do for the first few turns, and those get those Calm Minds, but it means this Incineroar is immediately looking pretty vulnerable. Of course, there's probably a real boom there that Incineroar may just be uh, looking like an Incineroar for a moment, but at plus two and Trastalization boosted, even Rillaboom doesn't really want to take an Ivy Cudgel on this switch -in. And Tim switches out in Cinnaroar. It will be the Rillaboom, so Stefan calling that. Going to be crashing into that slot with a Flare Blitz from the Incineroar. The Grassy Surge will take effect. Grassy Terrain will cover the battlefield, and that's going to be important to the longevity of the Raging Bolt on Tim's side. Ogre Pond uses Ivy Cudgel here, connects into that Rillaboom slot, does 50% damage to it. Here's Raging Bolt using Dragon Pulse, but thanks to that Embody Aspect, does about 50%. Incineroar now crashes into that slot and picks up the K on Rillaboom, so a pivot piece from Tim's team has been knocked out. Uh, really kind of a telegraphed switch right there, right? Well, it was a really nice pin from Stefan, right? Yeah. Like, even if Incineroar stays in, it obviously goes down to Ivy Cudgel. If you look across the six possible Pokemon for Tim, probably nothing could take that Flare mm -hmm. Blitz plus Ivy Cudgel double up. And that's the kind of guaranteed hole that you really want to place in one of these teams. That's one of the fake-up Pokemon gone. The cycling is going to get a lot more difficult, but it doesn't really pay that high of a cost for it. It loses about half the health on the Ogre Pond. Um, but the Raging Bolt, it, we talked a second ago that if it is left on an island, left at the end of the game, and there's a Clefairy hiding in the back for Stefan, then it's going to be very difficult for Tim to actually find win conditions. And so getting that first hole down, that makes it a little bit easier to get the second KO and start to kind of cascade these knockouts that simplify the game state, uh, I don't think that's in Tim's favor, and I think this is a pretty strong start for Stefan. But Urshifu loves to find a free entry onto the field, gets out here with its Focus Sash intact, is threatening both of these Pokemon. Ogre Pond might be low enough to just go down to a close combat of its own, and of course Incineroar doesn't want to take anything from this Urshifu. No close combat for me, no Aqua Jet, no Surging Strikes at all. Uh, but one of the nice things about Incineroar is that even if you switch it out, you know, having access to that uh, Intimidate will kind of matter for the Incineroar over on Tim's side, not going to matter too much against this uh, Urshifu or the Raging Bolt. So, uh, you know, Tim really thought that turn through about what was needed to be sent in as Stefan gonna retreat the Ogre Pond with two stages of increased attack. So, uh, one stage of increased attack actually because of the Intimidate from early on. Clefairy takes the field here. So, uh, Clefairy, a very important Pokemon in this matchup, takes this close combat so well. 
Yeah, I think that's actually a really smart switch from Stefan. It looked like that was almost a pin on the Ogre Pawn. If you're really committed to having the Ogre Pawn on the field, then it is a pin. Even if you bring Clefairy into the other slot to make sure that you can take close combat, if you're attacking that turn, then you're going to go down to a Thunderclap. But just recognizing Ogre Pawn was in a vulnerable position, even with the boost, couldn't stay on the field. And so really safely glitz Clefairy in there, uh, keeps Ogre Pawn for later on in the match, um, and then also manages to get the parting shot to get Incineroar out and just reset this position into the Landorus next to Clefairy position that we talked about before the match can be really difficult for Tim to deal with. This uh, it, Landorus is going to be able to pump out a ton of damage. Raging Bolt at the moment, if Follow Me is clicked by Clefairy, offers no damage at all, and Landorus is able to go after Urshifu. Now, Tim may not hate a Surging Strikes into Follow Me trade, right? If you can get rid mm -hmm. of Clefairy, then suddenly this looks very different. Raging Bolt looks like it's about to take over the match, even down a Pokemon. And Urshifu has the Focus Sash, that means it can at least get through one turn and get one of those attacks off. But it would be a really volatile trade. Both players would be giving something of, like, incredible value. The health bar of this Clefairy versus the health bar of this Urshifu. So both, either one of them could opt out of it. I think it'll be really interesting to see how they approach it if either player uh, just doesn't want to make that trade. Yeah, and uh, Surging Clefairy, bulky Pokemon with that Eevee Light, but uh, taking, it does not want to take that many Surging Strikes at all. But Surging Strikes may also be the only real way to get through. We talked right. about Incineroar does not have Flare Blitz, mm -hmm. and we're going to be trying to knock it off. The Raging Bolt can never get to Clefairy at all, and so Tim just commits this Water Trastalization, takes an Earth Power that will actually take it all the way down to the Focus Ash, but that's because this is the window. This is the one chance to try to really get a lot of damage mm -hmm. into the Clefairy. And there's no Follow Me, I believe, as Urshifu uses Surging Strikes, and that just lands straight into that Landers here. Big damage, and it will be enough for the KO. Uh, this could be enormous. If this is Moonblast coming out from the Clefairy to confirm this KO, well, that, then where big. do you, how do you ever deal with Clefairy? Yeah, so Clefairy not opting to go for a follow me here. Uh, Stefan sending in that lander is just a very juicy target for that Urshifu here as Raging Bolt content to go for a Calm Mind as Clefairy does double up into that Urshifu slot and picks up the KO on that Terrestrialized Urshifu. So a big threat to try to break through the Clefairy, gone. Yeah, I think it's just a really smart play from Stefan to recognize that, yes, Clefairy could be used to protect Landers and keep Landers on the field, but that means uh, Urshifu would have the chance to uh, to protect itself. I think that's probably still a winning path for this game. You can probably try to eventually land an Earth Power onto Incineroar as well, but just saying, actually, Landers is not the most critical thing here. Getting rid of Urshifu before it can land two Surging Strikes. That could have still been one Surging Strikes in the Clefairy that turn, but before it could land two Surging Strikes onto Clefairy means that I'm going to uh, probably win this game. It's looking very difficult for Tim to find the right damage. Uh, he will try. There will be plenty of damage coming out, mm -hmm. but the grassy terrain means that it's going to be slow going. Um, and meanwhile, that Incineroar uh, on the other side will probably start getting targeted down by Ivy Cudgels. Yeah, so the final two Pokemon on Tim's side of the field Going to be that Raging Bolt, going to be that Incineroar that does not have Flare Blitz. So if it does hit into that Clefairy, it'll have to be a knockoff to knock off the Evilite. And then after that... This is one kind of open turn for Tim. This is the one chance mm -hmm. he's going to get to have to fake out a Clefairy on the other side. Um, but no, it just... Uh, <laughs> it just gets faked out instead. <laughs> yeah, but I think Seven makes a really smart play here, because if you were too aggressive in trying to get, oh. ooh, it just sings it to really turn off the damage coming in the other side. If you got too aggressive here, and it tried to just immediately switch the Incineroar into Ogre Pond to create mm -hmm. that situation, that it could have been, uh, you know, a fake out into a fairy and a Dragon Pulse that tried to get rid of the Ogre Pond. Now, with Incineroar asleep on the other side, um, and no fake out ever going to be available for Tim, again, it looks a lot more like that follow me is just going to be enough to, to really ice out Tim's offense. Yeah, so Clefairy now doing what Clefairy does best, gonna protect its friend and just redirect all attacks. Raging Bolt still continuing to try to get as many Calm Mind boosts as possible as Incineroar on Stefan's side. Will Parting Shot away, targeting down the Incineroar on Tim's side. So this is a way to be able to get the Ogre Pond in safely. Incineroar has to take a turn of sleep here, so Ogre Pond comes in for free. Yeah. Uh, Ogre Pond comes in for free and is really free from here on out. Um, 
I don't think minus one knockoffs are going to beat this Clefairy very fast at all. And that's really the only damage Tim has available to him now at this point in the game. As long as Follow Me is clicked every turn, Raging Bolt can't do damage, Incineroar can only use knockoff into a resisted uh, Clefairy. It, it's it's kind of a, uh, a checkmate situation. Yep, and the grassy terrain will disappear from the field, so Raging Bolt will not... Well, I mean, I guess Raging Bolt hasn't really needed to take advantage of it yet because uh, Stefan has just kind of ignored this Raging Bolt because of this Clefairy here becoming the center of attention. Raging Bolt will use Thunderclap, but again, redirected into that Clefairy fails immediately as Ogre Punch just goes for an Ivy Cudgel here. Will target down the Incineroar, will be doing some big damage and gets the KO. Yeah, and now, there's, KO. And now there's no damage, right? I mean, the Incineroar... Beyond the fact that it had so little damage output coming in, was facing down a faster water terrestrialized ogre pawn who was very happy to just ivy cudgel a sleeping incineroar. And now uh, it's just follow me and maybe sword stance to speed it up a little bit, yep. or Tim but can just run Tim, and end it. But it Tim is runs. just a checkmate situation because of the relationship between Clefairy and Raging Bolt. Uh, and that's going to be such an important part of this match because there is some path through this match where Tim wins a game off of Raging Bolt being the carry. But it has to involve keeping other Pokemon like Rillaboom and Urshifu that can actually do damage to Clefairy alive into the end game. He's going got to have a Pokemon advantage that because Raging Bolt dealt some earlier damage, that means he's able to trade those Pokemon for Clefairy and then have Raging Bolt win the game. If it happens the other way, like it did in this game, where Stefan has the earlier offense, push, pushes the hole through the team with his Flare Blitz into Raging Bolt, and then the second hole through the team with the Earth Power plus Moon, Moon Blast into Urshifu, then he will always win that because Clefairy just wins against Raging Bolt in the end game. I think it'll be really interesting to see whether Tim just decides that this is not a, 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 val a valid enough path for the game to try to create Raging Bolt win conditions that it's going to be too difficult to get Clefairy off of the field uh, early enough to not just get checkmated this way. And then what modes does that leave for the team? Because this is a team that is so focused on the Raging Bolt that it doesn't mean there aren't other ways to play. You, he has an Ogre Pond of his own that can deal a lot of damage. Um, of course, doesn't like beating up against Incineroar and some of these other Pokemon, yeah. but it might at least avoid that checkmate situation. Yeah, so if Tim wants to maintain that Raging Bolt win condition that this team sometimes chases a lot, needs to preserve that offense. I like, like you said, that Clefairy just sticking around on the field, not gonna be great. Like, you need something to be able to just go off on the offense, and there's options, right? There's so many different options, like, uh, not, like, the Hearthflame Mask Ogre Pond can also be an option to try to chunk away at the Clefairy, uh, you know, using I, the Terrestrialization there to get the Embody Aspect and just hammering it away with an Ivy Cudgel or something like that. Yeah, I think one way or another, the first KO is just so pivotal, this match. It's mm -hmm. that first uh, block out of the wall that makes it start to collapse. And I think Stefan just did a really great job in that game one of identifying a way to create that. Getting the early sword stance never really allowed much risk to the Ogre Pond with the special defense boost from turn one and not clicking a, a damaging attack that turn. There was no real way for Raging Bolt to do a ton of damage into Ogre Pond before it created this position where the Ivy Cudgel and the Flare Blitz were going into one slot and that was going to be a KO. Tim changing it up here and so is Stefan. Urshifu and Rillaboom over on Tim's side of the field. Ogre Pond and Tornadus for Stefan. So Stefan changing it up a little bit. Uh, Tornadus going to be able to provide some Tailwind support as well as, uh, you know, a bleak wind Storm into these two. Wouldn't be too bad. Yeah, uh, Tim makes the adjustment. Doesn't have Raging Bolt on the field. This is what we saw uh, from that first game that never actually happened, um, where I think you have to have a little more of your offense out early to try to punch that first hole. Um, but Stefan, I think, has the right things in against it. The Ogre Pond and the Tornadus really don't mind fighting against these Pokemon. It's a little bit of a volatile position. Lots of damage can go either way. Uh, the Tornadus, of course, can still be faked out. does not have a Covert Cloak, but it pays some recoil damage in the process for that. But yeah, Urshifu cannot fight in this situation. has to worry about uh, the Ogre Pond on the other side and a bleak wind storm possibly coming in. So instead, it's just Raging Bolt into that slot to resist this one leech. Yeah, so nice defensive switch right there from Tim to be able to get that Raging Bolt in for what is essentially free here as a Bleak Wind Storm connects onto the Rillaboom as Rillaboom will retaliate with a big wood hammer here but does not get the one hit KO on the Ogre Pond so uh, Ogre Pond hanging on with just a little bit of health as everybody will take their grassy terrain uh, killing so really great defensive switch right there from 
Tin to be able to get that Raging Bolt in. And again, with the leftovers and that grassy terrain, it will heal back up. It will be fine. Yeah, it'll be fine. It does mean that it is in this match, right? It means that that Clefairy in-game is a looming possibility once again. Uh, a lot of damage is traded. Stefan gets the Bleak Wind into Rillaboom. But the big difference is when that KO doesn't actually happen, it's easy enough for Rillaboom to try to pivot off the field here. Uh, the Ogre Pond was gotten was pushed low enough in health that a Thunderclap is a real threat. Thunderclap also a threat into Tornado, so you can't just take it for granted that a Calm Mind is what's going to happen on the other side and just continue to try to press offense into Rillaboom's partner in the same way that Game 1 uh, happened. Um, and so, yeah, Ogre Pond just flees this situation, uh, doesn't want to take a Grassy Glide or a Thunderclap and go down. So it's Clefairy coming in and being exposed to damage. This is the kind of initial pressure that Tim needs. Uh, to mm -hmm. try to get a lead in this game. Yep, and there's a Grassy Glide connecting into the Tornadus. It will be damaged from the... Ooh, that's not even enough to get the KO there, though. Thunderclap, not enough to get the KO. As Bleak Wind Storm from... Ooh, Ooh, that's a big miss right there. So there's Rocky Helmet recoil on the Rillaboom that it took. Almost like... It's, it's low in health, and the Bleak Wind Storm would have KO'd, but... That's, a, that's an unfortunate miss right there for Stefan. Yeah, I mean, I think a start, smart switch from Stefan, right? Uh, Tornadus is only still not KO'd right now because of the friend guard from Clefairy, giving yeah. it enough health to take that Grassy Glide and Thunderclap double up. Tim, I think, knew the damage outputs there, right? He knew that Thunderclap wasn't enough on its own, and so tried to add in that Grassy Glide. But with Clefairy on the field, just changing those damage calculations the way that you talked about, it still wasn't enough. And so Stefan got that chance for the Bleak Wind. It would have gotten that crucial first KO and started to make life difficult for Tim, but it misses. That's what you're... Always the problem with Bleak Wind Storm, when you're trying to hit two of them over two turns to KO a Pokemon, your accuracy starts to look somewhat bleak. And so <laughs> nice. uh, it doesn't get the KO onto the uh, Rillaboom, and once again, it's able to just try to pivot out of this position and keep all four Pokemon alive, or try to go out on the offense. You never, you don't want a wood hammer to land into Clefairy either. I mean, any moment could be where suddenly a ton of damage comes in. Uh, Clefairy does just follow me, make itself a little bit vulnerable for this turn. And here, Tornadus does use Bleak Wind Storm, and again, Rillaboom oh. dodges the attack. Oh, oh, a double miss right there. Rillaboom uses wood hammer, though, will connect into that Clefairy, does big damage. That's the big damage that you need to lay down onto that Clefairy as Raging Bolt uses his turn to go for a Calm Mind. So big Bleak Wind Storm miss right there for Stefan, allowing this Rillaboom to stick around on the field and going for a huge chunk of damage into that Clefairy. Yeah, I mean, that just... Uh... A devastating couple of Bleak Wind Storms for Stefan because it looked like a fairly safe play. Um, Grassy Glide could have come in before Bleak Wind Storm into Clefairy, but wouldn't have done that much damage. You can trust that Grassy Train will slowly heal that off, but because of the pair of Bleak Wind Storm misses, instead it's a Wood Hammer land in the Clefairy, now it's looking a lot lower. That's definitely in, like, for instance, Surging Strikes KO range. We saw in Game 1 he was able to keep Clefairy on the field against the Urshifu without too much risk because it was healthy. It's not going to be the same this game, even with a couple more turns of Grassy uh, uh, train recovery Clefairy will always be vulnerable to a surging strikes and it starts to look a little bit more like now that boosted raging bolt uh, could have a win condition in the end game yeah as long as that Clefairy gets knocked out that raging bolt will be an absolute menace Clefairy using follow me again this turn does not want to allow the uh, tornadoes to be able to take a thunderclap as grassy light connects into Clefairy and here tornadoes connects on that bleak wind storm We'll be able to get the KO on that Rillaboom, but Clefairy has paid quite the price here. Clefairy is very low in HP, so uh, this Clefairy does not have that much staying power left as Raiden Bolt content to go for yet another Calm Mind. Yeah, and this is the problem with using the Clefairy in the early game this way, is if, if you're in the situation where you're down to the last couple of Pokemon, then Raging Bolt having dead turns means that it's just not doing anything. But when those dead turns are early on, it can just continue to get boosts, right? They could not have done damage that turn. Even if Tim had wanted to do damage, there was no damage to be had. But it can continue to boost and mean that when this Clefairy goes down, for instance, it's very easy to just bring in the Urshifu right now, or the Ogre Pond works just as well. And now you put pressure. You can put a an attack into the Clefairy slot. It either stays in to keep Tornadus safe, or it leaves and leaves Tornadus on an island by itself, having to actually fight against this Raging Bolt without either protection. And either option is good. You have to kind of give up something now if you're Stefan because of how low Clefairy's health bar has got. Yeah, so there are a lot of options that Tim has adjusted to be able to bring to try to chunk away at this Clefairy. The Rillaboom, the Urshifu, and this Ogre Pond adjustment. Really cool to see that, you know, Tim saw, hey, this Clefairy's a problem. I gotta do something. Incineroar, a Pokemon that is so good with his balance team, just not brought at all. The Intimidate don't need it. 
Uh, yeah, recognizing well. that two dead Pokemon against Clefairy, two Pokemon that really have no damage output against Clefairy is just too much. That's really difficult to overcome. So Clefairy here will protect itself, uh, does not want to get knocked out just yet. Ornatus will use his turn to opt for a Tailwind, a little parting gift for the team behind Stefan here, as Ogre Pond will use Ivy Cudgel uh, into the Clefairy Protect, and Raging Bolt will go for a Dragon Pulse and secure the KO on the Tornadus. Yeah, and so exactly this is where Stefan has to give something up. There was no way to continue to follow me, that Dragon Pulse, on that turn. Even if you had clicked the button, it would have been Ivy Cudgel landing the Clefairy for a KO and then Dragon Pulse landing into Tornadus. Tornadus tries to survive an extra turn by uh, Tailwinding, when, which would have prevented Thunderclap damage, um, but just goes down to a Dragon Pulse and Tim making smart targeting to understand that uh, just needs to start taking KOs. And now you look at low health Clefairy, low health Ogre Pond. Uh, Landorus, that is in that situation where it would have loved to fight against Raging Bolt early on in the game, but now this is a twice boosted special defense uh, Raging Bolt. It looks a lot more difficult for Landorus to actually find the offense. And we know because Tim led it, that there's also still an Urshifu lurking in the back that's going to love to be up against that. Uh, the Landorus on the other <laughs> side. Uh, the Tailwind probably not making too much difference here. It may have shifted the speed relationships between uh, the two Ogre Ponds. Uh, often Ogre Pond Hearth Flames are trained a little bit faster than Ogre Pond Wellsprings, um, but now because of the Tailwind on the last turn, we can trust that Stefan is faster. Clefairy may also, Clefairy a very slow Pokemon. Um, not impossible that it became faster than Raging Bolt after uh, the Tailwind. Um, uh, but yeah, once again, Clefairy, if it follow me's to try to keep a Thunderclap away from this Ogre Pond, then it should be going down to an Ivy Cudgel on the other side because the Ogre Pond Wellspring on seven side just doesn't have the damage to immediately take out the Ogre Pond Hearth Flame on the other side. Yeah, so Tim sacrificing those uh, Calm Mind Boost switches out. We'll send back in the Urshifu. So Urshifu will try to go up against these two and looks like there is going to be terrestrialization. It is going to be the Ogre Pond on Stefan's side of the field getting that embody aspect. Special defense boost uh, at such low health, probably not going to matter too much, especially if this Ogre Pond on Tim's side will be going on the offensive. Uh, so let's see how this turn plays out as Ogre Pond over on Tim's side will Spiky Shield here, does not want to possibly take an IV Cudgel into that slot and just take big damage. The translation could also be to make sure that the Ogre Pond has enough damage output to be able to KO. And here's a sing from Clefairy, but it misses. Oh. Urshifu dodges it. Got some earplugs in. Yeah, Clefairy trying to go after what was the Raging Bolt, maybe hoping to be faster or just still trade something and get Raging Bolt put to sleep so that it can't have continued damage output. Uh, the translation from Ogre Pond trying to see if that is enough damage to KO, just yeah. KO the Ogre Pond. Maybe with a critical hit, it would be. Um, but Ogre Pond keeps itself safe. And Tim makes the adjustment to have two big attackers on the field and really put a bunch of pressure on Stefan. He has the speed advantage, but he's got a lot of damage coming back his way. There was a high cost paid for that, though. If, if Tim doesn't think that it's Landorus in the back, that is still an unrevealed Pokemon, still a Pokeball on the screen, then those special defense boosts don't matter as much. But with it being the Landorus, that was actually a pretty high cost to switch that out. Um, and we'll have to see if that uh, is a regret for Tim in the endgame. Tim will switch the Raging Bolt back in, save that Ogre Pond for later on as Clefairy. Perhaps one last follow me here as Ogre Pond will use Horn Leech into the Urshifu. Will be super effective damage. Will heal Ogre Pond back up into green health range as now Urshifu will connect with the Surging Strikes. And yep, no more Clefairy on the field. So uh, that Raging Bolt is breathing a sigh of relief, but we'll see if Tim is breathing a sigh of relief when he sees that Landris is the last Pokemon in the back for Stefan. Yeah, so that checkmate scenario from game one is gone here in game two. Clefairy goes down to a surging strikes this time uh, and paves the way for Landers to come on the field. Uh, in some ways, this is a strong position for Stefan. He's got the focus sash broken, has the speed control on his side. Ogrimon may have actually healed enough from that Horn Leech to not be vulnerable to a uh, Thunderclap mm -hmm. anymore either, which could make a big difference to try to be able to put an Earth Power into Raging Bolt and a Horn Leech into the Urshifu on the other side, or an Ivy Cudgel to be covered for the Ogre Pond to come in uh, and, and make it a little bit easier for Stefan to press the offense. Definitely, despite losing Clefairy and losing that really easy end game that we saw from game one, would not count Stefan out here. He's got the speed, he's got a couple of big attackers on the field, and Tim looks a little bit vulnerable here. Yeah. It will come down to if Tim can stall out this uh, Tailwind just so that way uh, not all of Stefan's Pokemon will be outspeeding Tim's Pokemon as Ogre Pond uses Ivy Cudgel here. It does connect, 
You see the excitement on Stefan's face as it knocks out the Urshifu here. So now, how does Tim react to this after taking a Lander's Earth Pound? That's just a one-hit KO. That's just a one-hit KO. Those special defense boosts are a thing of the past, and that's just a KO. Tim doesn't even try the Thunderclap into Ogre Pond there, uh, and so the Ivy Cudgel just goes off. The Urshifu on the other side also could have protected that turn and tried to keep itself around, but it doesn't happen. And so nothing could have gone better for Stefan than the way that turn played out. Gets the Ivy Cudgel KO, gets the Earth Power KO, and now is in prime position to get this last KO against Ogre Pond and win this set. Yeah, so Tim with just the Hearth Flame Mask, Ogre Pond against Landorus and Ogre Pond. Not a position that you want to be in as Ogre Pond will fight this out does connect a wood hammer onto the ogre pond over on Stefan's side does get the ko but again landris has such great typing uh coverage because of the its access to sludge bomb sheer force boosted life orb boosted uh sludge bomb but looks like it's just going to be an earth power into that ogre pond slot and that will get the ko and Stefan mott will make it and secure the spot in day two here at the orlando regional championships yeah, Earth Power recovering for a possible tricellization. Tim had never had to use it in that game. Um, but yeah, just get, has so much.